Waniki suck, Natasuis Mosquita, New Tomas Nasipia. Good day, my name is Behart Mosquita, and I come from Mashpee, and I am the newly elected Mashpee Wapanada Tribal Council Chairman. The experiences that I bring to this position is the ability to listen to our people. Uh, my track record has always been for the youth and youth development. In 2009, we started the Youth Council to prepare our young people for governance. Um, I seen a problem in our tribe. You could run when you were, you know, 25, but you can vote when you're 18. Um, so because our young people didn't have a voice, we implemented the Mashwampanoag Youth Council. Um, after working with the Youth Council, I went on to serve the National Congress of the American Indians NCAI Youth Commission as co-vice president as well as the National United National Indian Tribal Youth Unity, the oldest, largest Native American youth-led organization, serving as Northeast Area Representative, and then to go on as co-president and trustee for two terms. Um, that gave me a lot of experience in Indian country, working with tribal leaders at various tribal conferences and such, and um, the relationships I bring in Indian country are also something I bring to this position. My goals as tribal chairman is to restore the unity in our community. Um, and that's going to take healing. Um, our people need to heal now more than ever. Um, I think that this pandemic and a lot of losses and tragedy that we've had in the tribe, um, it's important for leadership to lead by example. Um, and we plan on doing that by listening to the people, making sure that their voices and concerns are heard, um, as well as restoring the trust um, that we once had in the tribe and our leadership um, through enacting things like the ethics ordinance, constitutional reform, um, a finance committee and ordinance and um, a lot of things that the members have been asking for for years. Um, the day-to-day -day is going to vary, um, you know, depending on what kind of news the tribe's getting. We're in the process of, you know, hopefully hearing back from the Department of Interior on a new decision for our rod um, with the land into trust. Um, I think that once that happens, we're going to see a lot of things pick up here, um, whether it's through gaming or other economic development endeavors that the tribe will, you know, go into, you know, um, see happen, you know, for our people. You know, a lot of meetings with a lot of representatives, the governor, um, and picking up, um, you know, where we left off with a lot of those discussions with the mass delegation. I plan on addressing the outside relationships with our local um, and national um, partners and you know municipalities um, from various approaches. I think that right here in our own backyard um, we need to have a meeting with the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager um, to talk about some of the Aboriginal rights harassment, um, you know, harassment that our tribal members received while at the pond or you know other things that happen within our community. Um, I think the town can do a better job at negotiating and working with the tribe on various projects and initiatives um, for the entire community. Um, I think a prime example of that is the vaccination plans, um, where the tribe sat there and vaccinated our local you know, school systems and the staff and the faculty. And that's just one of the relationships and partnerships I think that we can build on within our tribal nation. And then also working on the state level you know, with the governor. Um, I think that the governor needs to understand, um, you know, what the Commonwealth owes the tribe um, as far as restitution, land negotiations, and um, so on and so forth. And uh, those are meetings and things that we plan on addressing throughout this term. In my opinion, the duties of the tribal chairman is to be the eyes and the ears, um, so to speak, um, at the national level. Um, with having these partnership meetings, um, meeting, you know, one of the things I'm most looking forward to is um, with President Joe Biden in there. He's bringing back the Native Tribal Leaders Summit, which President Obama had done. And they'll invite all of the tribal leaders, and that way we can get a better understanding of what's going on at the federal level and bring those services back to our tribe. Um, and work on, you know, various other projects like that, um, making sure that we're not missing out on the opportunities where there's federal funding and um, other avenues for the tribe to, you know, prosper. So being the youngest uh, elected tribal chairman, um, obviously uh, the youth, I've been very passionate about our youth, but I've also been very passionate about our elders. Um, I think that in this new role and capacity, um, you know, being the official, you know, leader of almost 3,000 tribal members, you know, you're going to have to work with everybody um, and work with the personalities and everything else that comes with, you know, the title and the position that, you know, is really for the people. Um, I think that as long as this position listens to the people, um, the tribal chairman's job is to work with the people and be a leader, not so much a dictator and kind of run the show. Um, and that's what this new administration plans on doing, you know, letting everybody do their job. I don't think that I need to be part of everything. If there's something that needs to come to my attention, um, you know, taking it from there. 
Um, but also when I was a council person, um, one of the first pieces of legislation I produced was the elders resolution. Um, our elders had a concern that they would be pushed out of this building in their elders area and I created a resolution to make sure that that area would always be theirs um, for time and memoriam um, as long as they have that place um, and they're around. So our elders will definitely also be a priority and I think as long as we continue to listen to them, um, that's the biggest job of the tribal chairman. So there is a lot of hostility I think that um, has been in the tribe and um, it's been here for a while. Um, I think that one of the biggest problems has been um, the division caused by former administrations and the trust that the people have or the lack of trust that people have in our leadership. And we're going to plan on restoring that by being more transparent um, through, you know, giving access to tribal citizens. Um, this pandemic has shown us that, you know, Zoom and stuff like that can work and, you know, using modern technology to make sure that our members, regardless of where they live, are informed on what's going on here and providing them with the actual news, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and not just making it, you know, one-sided, um, you know, just the good stuff that happens around here. I think that that's been the problem with the tribe and that as long as we work together, it's going to take the team, not just the tribe or the tribal council, you know, it's going to take each and every one of us as individual citizens to now support the leadership, um, regardless of who voted for who. You know, now is the time for us to come together as a people and heal. And I think that the clan mothers and elders and young people, um, as long as we lead by example, that they'll follow in. You know, we can really restore the trust and the unity that we once had in our community. I think that it's a benefit for our elders to see a young person. Um, one of the reasons why um, I didn't go away to college and stuff was because I was here and in the community serving on various committees and starting the youth council and it kind of gave the elders a sense of hope and relief because our elders and a lot of people in our community have been carrying the weight for so long. So, you know, knowing that there was a young person that they've seen stepping up in the community, um, I think has gone a long way and I want to encourage our younger people to also step up. Um, one of the reasons why I ran for this position was multiple reasons, but um, a lot of times we have a colonized mindset of telling people they're too young for something or you need a degree for this, that, and the third. And I think that this is a prime example of you're never too young for anything and that the tribe um, finally has a leader that is based in the community and cultural and spiritual um, upbringings that you know will bring traditional aspects to our government. Um, my life's work, what in my life has led me to this moment is my willingness and my love for the people. Um, my native name, Bear Heart, um, you know, bears are considered medicine um, keepers in our societies and um, a bear, you know, I think that their hearts, they have strong hearts, you know, they're pretty big animals and stuff. Um, but as long as you lead from your heart, I think that a lot of my actions have come from my heart. Um, I think that my spiritual name, you know, serves me well um, and that I try to stay, you know, humble and grounded. Um, and that's, you know, as long as you stay humble and grounded, I think that you know, you'll show the community, um, you know, that you're there for the community. And as long as you do your actions from the heart and you speak from the heart, then you know that everything's kind of pure. And as long as you come from a good place, then I think that only good will happen for our tribe. My biggest motivation and in influencers, um, one of the people um, that come to mind is um, my grandmother um, who passed away, um, Karen K.K. Lopes. Um, you know, when you grow up, you always have like some person, you know, you're close to one growing parent or, you know, you have a relationship with somebody. Um, she was more like a mother figure to me. Um, and she passed away when I was a teenager from breast cancer. Um, and I've kind of tried to do um, the best that I can throughout my life to make sure that, you know, I honor her and our family to the best of my ability. But um, I went to a conference one time and uh, I heard somebody say that, you know, they try to live by the philosophy of asking themselves, you know, do I make my, have I made my ancestors proud today? Um, and I think that that's, you know, a big part of this is the ancestors, um, the creator, obviously, um, and all the people that have passed on now that are the ancestors um, are the biggest influencers in guiding me and also help keep me grounded um, to our land and our connections and, you know, the spiritual realm, too. Masipi means the place of the great waters. Um, that's the traditional name of the village um, that encompasses our original territory. It was a 50 square mile deed. Um, and today the tribe, you know, we have less than that that we own today. We have a few parcels in our tribal area and our homelands. Um, this particular piece that we're at today 
is um, what's known as 55 acres. Um, it was given to the tribe uh, back in the day. And we've held on to this area for a while and we've had a lot of ceremonies and um, traditional aspects being brought back to this area, um, such as our traditional structures like this men's we too behind us. So culture is gonna play a big role in this title and this new position that we are taking on with being the tribal chairperson. Um, for a long time, I think that the tribal chairperson has been seen more as a political um, entity and figure in the tribe. And traditionally, our leadership was chosen by how much one would give to their community. And um, throughout my life, I've been about the culture, our young people, the elders, and giving back and leading by example. And I hope that in this capacity, I'll continue to do that. So from a young age, you know, being proud of who you are, being taught to grow your hair out. Don't be afraid to learn your language. Don't be afraid to stand up for your people and advocate. Um, that's kind of the foundation that was instilled in me as a young person. I think that we can do a better job at the way that we do about, go about our cultural activities, um, you know, programming, you know, let's do Zoom, let's use modern technology to share our culture and our traditions with everyone. Um, I think that there's been a long time where some people have been kind of hesitant about reaching out and asking questions about our culture, and that's something that we plan on tackling through using our clan mothers and the clan systems and the families coming together. Bringing back things like Quahog Day, you know, bringing back projects like, you know, fixing this Wetu and any other, you know, cultural significant sites here in the tribe and in the town and bringing a lot of ceremony back to that. I think that once we start bringing ceremony back, that our community will start to heal in the land and everything else. Our waters are, you know, in some of the poorest conditions they've ever been in. And I think that, that all has to do with ceremony. You know, we've had water walks recently and a lot of other ceremonies that we're incorporating. Um, our tribe is always uh, evolving. Um, we've taken various ceremonies from other tribal nations and brought it here and tailored it to fit Mashby as a people. And I think that as long as we continue to get back to our ceremonial ways and our ancient ways, like being out here in the woods. Um, and originally the tribal council was the people. It was the people coming together and discussing. So that's the way that the council worked. It wasn't this form of government that, you know, the federal government wants us to be now with these political entities. And that's how we plan on bringing back, you know, the cultural aspects and restoring a lot of that healing and unity in the community through, you know, council meetings where people talk and we just listen to one another and, you know, create action from that. So I think that it's important for our tribal members to return home. And in order for that to happen, the tribe needs to work on various things such as housing, economic development. A lot of the reasons why our tribal members move is because of various reasons, but in all reality, it's hard to make a living here on the Cape and survive in our homelands. And that's one of the reasons why the former housing director, Alice Lopez, um, who was my cousin, um, she really lived by that example that she didn't want to see homeless people here in our homelands. And she did a lot of work and you know, now we have you know, housing on our reservation for the first time. Um, in you know many years um, and we're really hopeful for stuff like that and other opportunities that we can bring tribal citizens back and welcome them. Um, I think that the tribe can do better at communicating and reaching out to all of our citizens. Um, for a while it seems like a lot of the services and programs have been tailored and serviced just for Mashpee people here. Um, however, we have people in the Boston area, New Bedford, various cities, and also we have the families that leave for various reasons, for financial reasons, or they're in the military, or, you know, people that are in the foster care system. Um, and it's important for us to make sure that they're also part of this journey as we build the nation over the next four years. And we'll do that through various communications, updating our website, making things more accessible to them, such as our meetings, making them virtual, cultural programming virtually, um, you know, anything that we can do to try to better assist them and to get a better understanding of, you know, where they're at and where we can meet them. Um, I think that we haven't done a good job at that and I think that this new administration will work towards restoring a lot of that trust in the membership, um, regardless of where they live, that their voices are being heard and that they're being thought about. You know, I've been thankful to have the community support and I'm thankful that the community actually really wanted change. Um, I think that that was an example that we can see now in this past election. Um, the only way that this election wouldn't have worked was if the community wasn't ready for change. And by them taking that vote of confidence in me, I think that they're ready for a new leaf around here, a breath of fresh air. And I think it's important to have a young person that has the longevity and the motivation to get the things done that a lot of our ancestors and people are now tired and passing on, you know, hoping that the tribe can get to where they are. And hopefully that light is at the end of the tunnel and we'll reach that within the next four years.